Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Alam kong hindi pa kayo nakatanggap ng good morning galing sa inyong special someone chart. So ito na po, this is your good morning greeting. Good morning, you're welcome po. This morning is indeed good and beautiful and amazing. There's so much to be thankful for because we are all gathered here virtually to have an engaging discussion on sustainable lifestyle. My name is Val Vestil. I was your speaker in the first part of this webinar series, but now I have been honored to be invited by EMB to host and moderate this very significant webinar. I'm the Executive Director of the Association of Young Environmental Journalists, or AYEJ. Ang mission po namin bilang isang environmental nonprofit and startup media organization is to hashtag let the earth be heard through our different storytelling and capacity building strategies for the youth. And we will definitely let the earth be heard today as we will explore different initiatives that help promote sustainable living through social enterprise and green apps. Welcome everybody to hashtag tech to protect green apps for sustainable living. The second part of the hashtag tech to protect webinar series of DENR EMB led by the Environmental Education and Information Division for the International Youth Month Celebration. Ayan, happy International Youth Month sa ating lahat na mga youth at mga feeling youth. We are inviting everyone, especially the youth, to empower ourselves, reimagine a better world, and revive our environment. Now, the Green App for Sustainable Living webinar aims to feature the use and positive impact of green mobile applications and social enterprises in environmental management and protection. Through this, the EMB will be able to promote the digitalization that digitalization may not be the only answer to our environmental problems, but it's a good answer and along with behavior change, it can be an important part of the solution. Now that's out of the way. What better way to start this program than with a solemn prayer and the singing of the Philippine National Anthem. Please watch this. Let us all bow our head and put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Father in heaven, thank you for your goodness and for your blessings over us. We are grateful for giving us the opportunity to come together and learn on this webinar. May you bless our speakers so that they would be able to impart effectively their knowledge and expertise. Bless the participants as well so that they will be able to obtain vital information that they can apply. We humbly ask you, Lord, to be the master of this activity and to watch over us. We bring back all praises and thanksgiving for you alone are worthy. In Christ Jesus' name, we pray all these things. Amen. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Sa mandulupi, di ka pasi. 
It's a good day to show our love for the environment by talking about the environment. But, you know, every day, araw-araw po dapat tayo, it's a good day to continue our own efforts in environmental conservation. So what's going to happen this morning, we have invited resource speakers who will present their initiatives in promoting sustainable living through their social enterprises and green mobile applications. After the presentations of the three speakers, the panelists will have an opportunity to ask the speakers questions on their presented initiatives. The speakers may also ask from the panelists for support, information, and updates on the national agency's actions related to environmental management. This is to further encourage the resource speakers and participants for sustainable actions to be incorporated in their businesses, communities, and lifestyles. Now, the honor of welcoming us all to this occasion lies with no less than the Assistant Director of EMB Engineer, Vizminda Osorio. Engineer, please take it away. Thank you very much, Val. So, muli isang maganda at uh, makulimlim na araw po sa ating lahat. Good morning, everyone. So, on behalf of the DNR Environmental Management Bureau, I warmly welcome everyone to the second leg of our Tech to Protect webinar series. So, for those who have joined us in our first webinar last week, welcome back. And uh, of course, for our new attendees uh, and viewers, thank you for joining us uh, today. I would also like to extend my greetings to our panel of uh, reactors from the EMB Solid Waste Management Division, DNR Climate Change uh, Service, and uh, the National Youth Commission. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong pagpapaunlak ng aming invitation. And uh, of course, uh, this webinar series aims to feature the uses of uh, potential or positive uh, impacts of digital technology on environmental management and uh, protection. And as our online pre presence are increasing during the itong situation natin, there is also the need to step up our games our game in terms of uh, being environmentally aware and uh, knowledgeable. So in our first webinar, we have uh, learned the important uh, relationship between environmental advocacy and the use of social media, environmental journalism and uh, storytelling also. And uh, after all, we will not be able to address uh, various environmental challenges our country is facing unless we have a glimpse of the big uh, picture. So this morning, uh, our focus uh, will be on green apps or mobile and uh, online applications which uh, provide solutions uh, tips and uh, vital information on proper environmental management, such as uh, waste segregation, in the Indian ngayon, ano, composting, monitoring of uh, water bodies, and uh, air quality. And of course, so, sa local uh, LGUs natin, ang, yung mga environmental concerns. And uh, I, I highly encourage everyone to please uh, listen, ask uh, questions, and uh, try out these uh, app, apps in your own mobile uh, devices after today's uh, session. It is never too late to add value to our online presence. And uh, our use of uh, digital technology by uh, being environmental, environmentally responsible, changing our behaviors, and uh, believing that uh, we can be part of the solution. So with that, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for joining in this uh, webinar and uh, hope to see you again in our future activities. Maraming salamat po at uh, mabuhay po tayong lahat. Good morning, everyone. Back to you, Val. 
Maraming salamat, Engineer Osorio, for reminding us no, why we are here in the first place. Sabi ni Engineer, we should learn to add value to our own social media presence. So thanks for believing in the power of youth engagement and supporting social enterprises. Now, we would like to request everybody to please turn on their cams very quickly. I'll give you around five seconds to turn on your camera. Magpa, magpaganda muna tayo dyan. Magpapogi muna tayo. Because we want to have a photo, a photo opportunity with Engineer Visminda. Alam kong mahirap itong online kasi we're not able to see each other physically, face-to-face. Pero, ayan. Pero it would be good to see that we are all over the Philippines. All right. So someone from the team will be um, taking the photos. We have five panels right now. So baka nasa fifth panel ka. <laughs> so please, everybody smile. One, two, three for the first panel. And then for the second panel, one, two, three, smile. Okay. Third panel, one, two, three, smile. Wala na pala sa third. Ah, meron. Fourth panel. And the fifth panel. Ayan. Thank you so much. If there's anything I saw in common, it's that earth warriors are handsome and beautiful people. Do you agree? If you agree, Put your thumbs up <laughs> and comment the Zoom chat box. At this point, allow me to introduce our esteemed panel of reactors who will share their expert opinion and insights from the presentations of our panelists. I will call them one by one to just have a to give a good morning greeting to everybody. First, we have for uh, the OIC of the Solid Waste Management Division of DNREMB, Ms. Maria Delia Cristina M. Valle. Valdez. Hello, Hi, good, good morning. morning. Good, good morning. to see you again, Andalia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now we have the officer in charge of the Climate Change Mainstreaming and Integration Division of the DENR Climate Change Service, Ms. Susan Ruth Noel. Ms. Susan, hello. Magandang maga sa iyo. Kung nandito ka po, Ms. Susan, pakigalaw ng digital na baso. <laughs> All right, Siguro Ms. Susan uh, will be up and coming in a while. And of course, we have a youth, the Youth Advisor of Green Education Philippines, very good friend of mine, the true Lodi, Sir Vermont Timbas. Hello, Vermont. Hi, Sir Val. Opo, and of course, ating uh, mga participants and of course, ating speakers right, ano, right now po. So, ayan po. Green and good morning, everyone. Maraming salamat, Sir Vermont. Thanks for joining us. We are truly looking forward to hearing from all of you. So let's get the ball rolling and proceed now to the presentation of our speakers. Alam niyo mga kapatid, we got the best of the best. Talagang. Dito talaga. So this is definitely worth the wait. Before that, however, I would like to remind our participants here in the Zoom room and our Facebook live stream to engage with us and the speakers at any point in the presentation. If you have insights, comments, or some questions that you have in mind, feel free to fire away and comment it sa ating Zoom chat box or sa Facebook comments live stream. Also, do not forget to fill out our attendance form. And later, we will be having our communication evaluation form at the end of the program. So make sure you stay tuned for that. All right. So if you're ready for our presentations this morning, can I get a can I get a heart reaction from our participants dito sa ating Zoom? Can I get some heart reactions? Come on, come on. I want to see your heart reactions to see if you're ready. Heart? Yes, I see Alexander's heart. I see Andrelin's heart. Ayun, Antoinette's heart. Thank you so much. Christine's heart, David heart, Romilda's heart, James's heart. I see everybody's hearts this morning. Thank you so much. For the participation, we are over a hundred in this Zoom room. So let's kick it off with our lineup of presentations, starting with the Communications and Marketing Associate of the Plastic Flamingo or PLAF. It is a French social enterprise based in the Philippines that collects and transforms plastics into sustainable products to fight marine pollution. Prior to that, our speaker was a brand communications intern at BTL Ventures Startup Culture 
and content writing intern from Humble Sustainability. It's time to learn more about her and the incredible work she has with the Plastic Flamingo. Please give it up for our first speaker this morning, Miss Allison Audrey Villacruz. Allison. Hello, hi, good morning po everyone. Magandang umaga. Uh, just give me one second. I'll be sharing my screen uh, to show the presentation. Uh, I think I need right. to be able to screen share. All right, so as our tech team prepares, gives you um, co-host powers so that you can share your screen. Sana po lahat tayo ay safe. Iba-iba po yung ating weather uh, no? these past few days. Sa umaga mainit, sa gabi malamig. <laughs> So, I, climate change is real. Uh, it, it, it's not a question anymore. Allison, uh, there you go. Take it away. All right. So, first of all, I want to say um, a huge thank you no, to everyone who is attending this call right now. I think apart from the plastic flamingo collecting and upcycling plastics, one vital role that we want to play is to educate the people around us, to empower others, especially the youth. Because we are the generation of um, be beginning the change. Eh. So with the Plastic Flamingo, what we want to um, do with education is to serve as a, as a material or as a tool to let others know about what's the problem we have here in the Philippines specifically, and also to see what are the solutions available. So as mentioned earlier by the host, thank you so much for that introduction. My name is Alison. Um, for this call, Ali is already fine. I am the Communications and Marketing Associate. And I feel like it's quite fitting no? because my role at the PLAF involves community engagement. So this also involves how to educate people, um, handling the technology aspect of the PLAF, um, and how we can use that platform to um, eradicate change to other people. So with that being said, I want to give a summary of what I want to talk about today. Unang-una sa lahat, ang gusto kong pag-usapan talaga ay ang plastic crisis. Kasi bago natin malaman yung kung anong solusyon pwede, kailangan alamin muna natin kung ano ba yung problema ang hinuhugutan nito. Diba? What is the reason? Ano ba yung nangyayari ngayon in the current um, dilemma of um, the Philippines plastic crisis? At syempre, pagkatapos doon, gusto kong pag-usapan kung ano ba yung mga posibleng solusyon na ready, eh, na available na sa ating um, sa ating tabi, di ba? So, that's also including the plastic flamingo as a topic for today. So, I want to share this fact. I think most of us might have heard this na, pero sinasabing na one truckload of waste is dumped in the ocean every minute. So, minsan ako, kapag dumadaan ako sa, sa, sa road, sa kalsada, sa mga, pag nasa kotse ako, nakikita ko yung tabi minsan garbage truck. Now, imagine that amount. Imagine that amount of garbage in that truck and multiply it to 60, and then multiply it again to uh, 24, multiply it again to 30, and then multiply it again to 365. Now imagine that's the amount of waste that's being dumped in the ocean every year. Bakit nga ba? Bakit nga ba ito yung um, ginagawa ng mga tao? Unang-una, mayroon tayong um, toxic mindset eh, na ang laki-laki naman ng ocean. It's so wide, it's so deep, tsaka wala naman nakatingin. So okay lang na mag-dispose ako ng basura ko dito. The thing about it is our disposing, our improper disposal harms not only us, but also marine life. Okay, lalo-lalong sila kasi syempre sila ang nakatira doon. So that is also one of the things that the PLAF wishes to address and yun ay ang itackle ang marine plastic pollution dito sa Pilipinas. With that being said, I want to connect it sa... Uh, Philippines bilang top three, rank third tayo sa mismanaged marine plastic waste. Ngayon, sinasabi ng mga tao na um, hindi naman tayo yung unang bansa na nagproproduce ng plastic. Magkaiba kasi yun eh, magkaiba ang pagproduce ng plastic sa pagiging mismanaging of uh, plastic waste. So tayo bilang bansa, ang katabi natin ay ang China. Eh, ang laki-laki ng China, ang liit ng Pilipinas, baka hindi pa nga one-fourth ng China. So to think na yung amount of waste that we mismanage the uh, dispose, that's almost or likely the same sa dinidispose ng China. So with that being said, dapat maging wake-up call to eh. Dapat magising tayo sa katotohanan na itong nangyayaring plastic crisis, hindi, napin, hindi na dapat natin hintayin na bago pa mag-2050, kapag tumanda na tayo, no eh. We should start today. We should start to become part of the solution. 
So I also want to share this. Alam natin yung plastic, hindi lang siya nakikita sa sa oceans, pati na rin sa rivers, sa water bodies natin na nandito sa ating city lalo na sa Metro Manila. So, I live near Pasig kasi. At kapag dumadaan kami ng aking kapatid, usually like sa car, dadaan kami, titingin na ko, tapos sasabihin ko, may mga, ano kaya, may mga marine animals pa kaya na natitira dyan. And then, she, and then my sister would say, nako, siguro by now wala na. Or baka kung anong meron na sa loob. ba? Diba? I mean, putting that joke aside, I guess we can see that the Pasig River, meron tayong binibigay na mga cleanups, pero kung hindi tayo marunong mag-dispose ng plastic at uulitin lang palagi yung cleanups, walang magbabago. We can't always rely on cleanups. Eh. It is one way. But if we continue disposing um, with mis- uh, mismanagedly, talagang hindi matatapos ang problema ng plastic natin. So, isang ring river ay ang Marilao River at kilala rin ito bilang isang river na very plastic polluted. Lalo na ngayon ang plastic, napaka... Um, sikat siya, if I could say, sa ating bahay, sa ating household homes. Lalo na ngayong pandemya, nakikita natin, diba, dahil work from home setup tayo, usually for most of us, diba, mapapatingin ka sa, sa surroundings, sasabihin mo, anak ko, plastic pala tong phone case ko, plastic pala tong, itong phone stand ko, plastic pala siya, yung water tumbler ko, plastic siya, kahit sabihin mo may metal material siya. So, we see that plastic is already part of our lives. It's already something that we we depend on, di ba? Ang plastic rin, lalo na sa online shopping. Nako, ako, nabubudol ako. Na, uh, na, sinasabi palagi natin pag seal, Nako, I am a victim. Ayan, nabibiktim mo na naman ako ng online shopping. Pero paano pagbalik na rin natin? Paano pagsabihin natin tayo ang culprit ng online shopping? Dahil sa pag-consume natin, sa pagbili natin ng online shopping, dumadami ang plastic. Bumili ako nakaraan ng isang maliit na parang keychain para sa aking uh, bag. Sobrang liit niya, pero yung plastic niya napakalaki. Tapos may bubble wrap pa, may marami pang packagings. And sabi ko, kailangan ba talaga nito? Do we really need this much of plastic for just one tiny item? So, I want to move on to um, also a few things where you can find plastic. Ito yung plastic packagings. As I've mentioned, Um, lalo na sa grocery natin, diba? when we go sa mga palengke, iniisip natin na importante ang plastic. At ako rin, hindi ko i-deny. Hindi ko i-deny na ang plastic kailangan talaga siya. But the thing about it is, we need to know how to um, consistently or constantly resume, or uh, sorry, refuse, refuse plastics. Okay, so that is how we can parang become part of even a bit of a solution. So by 2050, there's, uh, it was said that there will be more plastic than fish in the ocean. With this being said, uh, we see that the problem is already nearing. Hindi lang siya, hindi na siya in, ano eh, in, in 50 years time, eh. hindi, kasi 2021 na ngayon. So um, sinasabi nga nila na hindi ito accurate eh. Kasi sinasabi na even now, this year, uh, marami ng plastic um, kaysa sa mga marine life, marine animals. In fact, meron tayong nabalitaan na karaan na may isang um, isda na nung hinate daw ni I think ni Manong sa sa palengke, nakita nila sa loob na ang daming iba't ibang klasing plastic. So meron tayong uh, kita sa picture, 'di ba? Meron tayong mga um, utensils, mga bottle caps, um, pati na rin yung mga candy wrappers, 'di ba? So this is reality already. This is something that we're already facing. At kung hindi natin gawa ng paraan ngayon, talagang walang mangyayari. Talagang we will suffer talaga the consequence of plastic crisis. So here are things that I want to import. Um, hindi ito related sa plafe, but it's more of an individual um, effort. Unang-una, refuse plastics. If you can, please do so. Alam ko, hindi naman siyang 100 to 0 na, oh, today plastic ako, tapos bukas, um, wala na. I will not use plastics anymore. It's impossible. Diba? Let's face reality also. But if you can refuse, kung kaya nating sabihin, no, no plastic, may paper bag ako, may eco bag ako, talagang I will refuse plastics. So that's when you have the sustainable alternatives. Pangalawa, segregate your waste. So um, lalo na ngayon, kailangan nating bigyang importansya ang pagsisegregate. So pwede nating simulan plastic, paper, food waste, ganun lang. Diba? And then later on, we can really segregate more um, waste materials. So segregating also, that's connected to the plaque. Because 
sabihin natin mag-segregate ka ng plastic. Saan mapupunta? That's where the fluff enters in. You can drop off your plastics to the fluff, plastic waste nyo. At ang mga um, katulad ng the fluff, meron rin mga ibang recycling centers na maaaring magbigay, um, I guess parang would set as a good example or a good area where you can drop off your um, excessive waste. And the fourth one is, of course, to educate and inform. Napaka-underrated kung masasabi ko. Um, I major in communication in college. And I feel like, you know, communicating, becoming a tool, becoming a voice is so underrated. Konting parinig mo lang sa, sa pamilya mo, sa kaibigan mo, that's going to radiate change already. Eh. So, with that being said, if we can start it in the simplest ways by just becoming a voice, you're becoming part of the solution. At masasabi natin na if technology can be used in bad things, it can of course be used also in good things. So let's choose of course the, the better half, right? So that's where I want to uh, mention some solutions. Now I want to move on to the technological or technical aspect of what the PLAF does. At paano ba kaming nagiging parte ng solution? So meron kaming tinatawag na PLAF loop kung saan um, nagko-collecta kami ng plastic so, ito ay isang parang halimbawang um, uh, photo na meron kami. At ngayon, nakakolekta na kami ng 100 tons of plastic waste. So, um, it's one of our very big milestones. Pagkatapos na may ikolekta, isinasort namin siya at nagiging flakes siya kung saan ito ay ang main ingredient sa pag-extrude namin ng plastics into eco lumbers. Ngayon, ano yung eco lumbers? So, nakikita niyo yung picture ngayon sa, um, sa kaliwa. Meron siyang, uh, meron kaming deck or uh, boardwalk kung saan ito yung um, gawa sa eco lumbers. So, eco lumbers, what we want to do is not just make it a materialization but also use it as a material to make or to build houses. So, I'll mention that later on. Pero ito yung konting qualities ng aming eco lumbers na maaaring makatulong. So, at the same time that we're collecting plastics, we're also trying to make use of that plastic waste. At hindi lang basta-bastang uh, matatapon or masusunog. Uh, in fact, ang pagsunog ng plastic, very, very dangerous. Diba? So, um, we also want to address this. Eh. Yung housing shortage natin sa Philippines, grabe yung backlog natin sa, sa housing. So, what we want to also focus with um, our mission is to also be uh, build transitional shelters. Ito ay yung konting sa aming mga designs na meron. So, ito ay para sa sari store at pati na rin sa, uh, for leisure. So, today I talked about a few things. Unang-una ay ang plastic crisis. Diba? Yung ano ba yung problema ang kinakaharap natin at ano yung ginagawa ng plastic flamingo para magbigay solusyon. Pero, ang nasa loob nito ay ikaw. Ikaw, ako, lahat tayo dito, uh, lahat, hindi lang dito, pero diba, lahat na ma makaka influence natin. The fact that we can start a movement, the fact that we can take steps and take action to become part of the solution is already something. Collecting plastics from your home, looking into so sustainable alternatives, or simply becoming a voice, it already sparks attention, sparks action. So that's where I want you to take part in. Um, ano na ngayon, um, yung social media kasi, it's one tool to educate people. So para sa PLAF, ginagawa namin social media um, platform ang aming mga Facebook, Instagram, pati na rin ang TikTok, um, parang magbigay ng um, ideya kung anong ginagawa namin. So you can find us on our socials to check out our drop-off points at pati na rin mga instructions. So, just to um, put it out clearly, we accept all types of plastics and what we do not accept are non-plastic waste or plastics with residue. Uh, kung madumi pa, hindi namin ina-accept. And I want to close it with just this short quote, individual efforts can bring excellence, but only collective efforts can deliver effectively. Ngayon, ngayon na alam nyo na at kung anong pwede nyo gawin, anong pwede nyo simulan, we have to start becoming um, part of that solution. We have to think about also how we can influence others. Um, sabi nga nila, ako kasi marketing kasi ang aking gustong um, it, uh, parang that's one of my para missions in life to market, to communicate and for me to say na nag-market tayo ng mga produkto, diba? We, we are part of some companies that market and communicate products. We also have to use that skill to communicate the environmental awareness that we can. So that's when we can really take a step and take action. 
So I thank you again, um, lalo na sa um, organizers itong events sa pag-imbitado sa PLAF para maging part din itong um, awareness. At maaari nyo kaming hanapin sa aming socials. We have on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, at pati na rin sa TikTok. So I thank you and I'll uh, bring it back to our host. Thank you. Thank you, Ali. I enjoyed your talk so much. I follow you on TikTok as well. <laughs> Thanks for reminding us uh, of very important things that uh, we always need to take note of. Kahit ako, guilty ako um, sa mga na-mention ni Ali. Pero sabi niya, we can refuse plastic. We should segregate our waste. And we can engage with PLAF to, uh, to take care of collecting our plastic waste. And of course, the need to educate and inform, which is what you are doing, Ali, sharing your story. And of course, which is what we are doing here in this hashtag tech to protect weather. Maraming salamat, Ali, and we will have you back later for our uh, open forum. Now for this next discussion, we will have another woman share their story of uh, solutions-based app. Our speaker has joined WWF Philippines as a project manager leading the country's first ever sustainable consumption and production project with a focus on food service and hospitality sector in the country called the Sustainable Diner, a key ingredient for sustainable tourism. Furthermore, she's also leading an innovation project that helps promote food waste diversion away from the landfills known as Soil Mate, an IT solution on food waste diversion through composting. This licensed environmental planner and registered nutrition dietitian has nutritionist dietitian has 14 years of diverse work experience with a special focus on sustainability, sustainable consumption and production in food systems, hospitality sector, human and planetary health promotion, among others. Ladies and gentlemen, our second speaker, Ms. Melody Melo Rake. Your turn to enlighten us. Hi, Val. Can you hear me clearly? Very clearly. Okay. Hi. Good morning. Uh, isang likas kayang umaga sa ating lahat. So, likas kaya is actually the Tagalog or the Filipino term for sustainable. So, I, I hope uh, you have learned a thing or two for from me for today. And of course, from our other, um, other participants in other parts of the Philippines, maayong buntag, um, naimbag nga bigat. <laughs> for Ilocano. So, good morning po sa inyong lahat. Um, maybe we can start sharing my screen now. Okay. Thank you. So, as mentioned by Val a while ago, uh, I'm leading the Sustainable Diner Project and also leading Soil Mate uh, Project of WWF. Um, next slide, please. So, just to give you an outline of my presentation for today. So, we will be focusing on on three uh, four major things we will start with the introduction of wwf and of course the sustainable diner project with which um, the soil mate app was born the second one is why do we zero in on food waste how how is how is the problem of food waste relevant to to our country today and of course the third one would be on uh, soil mate soil mate project why did we did uh, why did we embark on a journey towards a soil mate and last the soil mate mobile app so let's start with our organization i think you are very much familiar with our organization our famous panda logo so wwf previously we are known as uh, world wildlife fund but now we are known as worldwide fund for nature so we are one of the largest um, conservation and um, conservation organizations in the world operating in more than 100 countries and here in the Philippines we started in 1996. So as mentioned we were known as a uh, World Wildlife Fund but we changed our name to promote a greater mandate meaning we are not only focused on preserving and protecting our wildlife or our species but also any challenges that our country is facing today. So we have we have um, projects that are centered on climate and energy. We also have on freshwater management. We also have our species conservation. And of course, we have food, which my projects are very much related to. 
So for the next slide, it's all about the Sustainable Diner Project. So bagong-bago siya dito sa Philippines. So we started in 2017 and we will be concluding this September. So what is the Sustainable Diner Project all about? So the main goal of this project is to really promote and integrate sustainability principles in our policies, may, may it be local or national. And we are also um, supporting our food service sector, um, yung hospitality sector natin, because um, not, not a lot of people know that um, these sectors are really contributors to the effects or basically to, to, the, to the climate crisis that we are experiencing. You know? So that's what we are focused on in terms of our private sector engagement. And of course, we also want to influence the choices of Filipinos when it comes to food because your food choices matter pagdating sa ating environment. And uh, later on, we will be discussing them in, um, in detail. So next, what is the basic framework of the Sustainable Diner Project. So the Sustainable Diner Project is all about embodying five principles. That is um, using local, seasonal, and sustainable produce. So the things that we, we eat are hopefully we, we get it from our sources nearby within our communities. And of course, we want to, to support sustainable production. We also promote conservation of your resources, such as your energy and water. When it comes to food, you are using a lot of these resources. So that's what we also uh, adhere to, to, to conserve these resources, even petroleum, actually. We also include that. We also promote the reduction of your unnecessary plastics or your single-use plastic. So um, as mentioned by uh, Alison a while ago, ano, malaki din yung problema natin pagdating sa past, uh, plastic pollution. So it's also one of our ways to help um, as an industry sa, sa ating project. Um, eating more plant-based dishes and less meat consumption because... Um, based on several studies, it has already been proven that if, if we promote more plant-based dishes, we are also helping not only our health but also our environment because of, um, of our um, carbon emissions. Binaba, bumababa yung carbon emissions natin if we eat less meat. And of course, for today's topic, we are zeroing in on food waste. So... Paano nga ba nakaka-apekto yung food waste sa atin, sa ating kalikasan? Um, how, how does your food waste, I, if I would say, disrupt your, um, your, your relationship with nature? Ano? So actually, in the Philippines, malaking problema natin sa food waste. For example, here in the statistics provided, in Metro Manila alone, we are producing 2,175 tons of food waste every day. And those food waste, they are not properly utilized into a valuable resource. So lahat yan na pupunta siya sa landfills natin. Next, in terms of the, the, the amount of our biodegradable waste or yung, ano natin, yung mga nabubulok natin na pagkain or basically yung mga basura natin, so here in the Philippines, next slide please, you will see here that half of the municipal solid waste is really composed of your bio-waste. And more than 80% of that bio-waste is actually your food waste. So talagang lahat ng basura natin, we are very much dependent on landfill use. At dapat, in the first place, yung ating mga biodegradable waste, hindi na siya napupunta sa landfill kasi nagko-contribute pa siya doon sa pag-produce natin ng greenhouse gas, which is your methane. So ano ba yung mga implications ng food waste sa atin on our everyday lives? So sasabihin nyo, uh, ako pag hindi ko naubos yung food ko, wala lang to, mabubulok lang din to, and uh, hindi ko, hindi ko ma-feel yung effects nun. But actually, in the next slide, you will see that you, when you are wasting food, it has several implications in terms of economics, in terms of the environment and in terms of social social aspect ano so when you are wasting food definitely on on an economic perspective you are also wasting money diba 
binili mo yung food mo na yon tapos hindi mo kakainin, di ba? Sinayang mo yung pera mo. Second, in terms of environment, when you're wasting food, you are not only wasting that food alone, but also the other resources that were used to produce and create the food that you put on your mouth and you have on your plates. So maraming ginagamit dyan. We have our topsoil. Di ba? Pag tinatanim mo siya, gumagamit ka ng, ng water, gumagamit ka ng manpower, gumagamit ka ng other resources for you to have it on your plates. So nasasayang din siya when you're wasting your food. And on the social aspect, um, we see now, now more than ever that hunger and food insecurity is very much prevalent. So if you are wasting food, um, you are wasting also the opportunity for that food to be, to be eaten by someone else and to be, to be utilized and to nourish. So nawawala yung aspeto na yun. And hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na kapag kinain mo yung food mo ay mabubusog yung iba. Hindi ganun yung perspective natin. What we are trying to say here is, you are blessed with that with that um, food um, might as well use it for the greater good or if you will not be using it you might as well share it so later on papakita namin sa inyo yung aming um, prevention and uh, food waste reduction methods na pinopromote namin sa project so another another concern pagdating sa food waste yung nabanggit ko na kanina is um 7% of our greenhouse gases are actually coming from food waste. So, malakas din yung greenhouse gas na pinuproduce ng ating food waste. It's your methane. So, mas mataas yung kanyang heat trapping capacity compared to your carbon dioxide. And at the same time, um, talagang ano siya, um, um, contributor talaga siya pagdating, natin sa, pagdating sa ating greenhouse gas emissions. So what do we do? So what are our green solutions to food waste problems? So next slide, please. So just like in any um, waste management system, the very first, um, very first thing that you have to do is to prevent or reduce at source. So kung mapipigilan mo naman na magkaroon ka ng food waste sa inyong mga tahanan and sa inyong everyday living, do so. So yun talaga yung una. Second, if you are... If you have excess food and siya ay sound and edible pa rin siyang kainin, pwede niyo po siyang i-donate. So it will also address other problems in terms of food security, hunger, and mal malnutrition. And I think here in the Philippines, talagang nagawa natin siya because of our community pantry, di ba? So talagang nagkaroon tayo ng avenue para magbigay ng ating mga excess food. And of course, kapag ka meron talaga tayong food waste na hindi natin ma mapigilan na maproduce or talagang unavoidable na siya, that's the time we do our diversion methods or yung composting natin. Next, please. So here in the metro, talagang ma malaking challenge for us to do composting um, because initially when we did this project we we designed it for businesses but we we now see that there is also food waste that are are being generated on the household level at an unprecedented rate kasi lumipat na nga yung yung food waste natin from the commercial side to the household level ano so yung mga problems natin yan uh, limited options for them to divert food waste Meron tayong limited space for composting. Um, yung ating RA9003 na dapat per barangay, merong MRF. Wala tayong ganon. So, walang composting site. And yung composting kasi, if, if you do it the traditional way, meron talagang naiinit siyang odor. So, in terms of hygiene, meron siyang implication. And meron din talaga tayong mga problems pagdating sa waste collection. Okay. So how did WWF found a solution for this uh, food waste problem? So we have now our partnership with Green Space. So it's a social enterprise that is mainly focused on collecting and composting your food waste. So nakita namin yung potential niya and we want to partner them and we want to help them how to how to make their their advocacy uh, better uh, better reach the other the other um, people na hindi alam yung soil yung soil mate and yung green space 
So that is your um, Soil Meet mobile app. So together, we will be developing an app that would um, reach people and at the same time provide more information and um, because dig digitalization is the way to go now. So alam natin na talaga ang technology malaki yung papel papel niya sa atin sa sa buhay natin ngayon na no? so that's why we came up with soil meat so the main goal of soil meat is really to divert your your food waste away from the landfills and you will be using the app for you to have your buckets at your doorstep and at the same time green space will be the one collecting it for you but of course, um, we don't have naman the expertise to do it, to, to, to have the SoilMate app um, come in WWF and Greenspace. So we sought uh, the expertise of a mobile app developer. So it's Optimine Technology Solutions who helped us develop our, our app. So paano natin siya gagawin? So the main the main um, idea of the SoilMate app is your book a bucket experience. So, ano to? Um, let me have first the next slide. Next slide, please. Another one. Okay. So here, with the book a bucket, you just need to collect your food waste in your green space composting bucket. Then when your bucket is full, um, you will book a bucket through the app and green space will get it for you. So you will be given another empty bucket for you to fill. So dalawa, dalawa yung ano, um, buckets bali na may re receive mo every time you do exchanges. Uh, one bucket pala. One empty bucket and you will exchange it with a full bucket. Okay. Next. So meron tayong subscription plans pagdating sa soil meat. So we have here um, compost at home and compost at work. So when you do compost at home, basically you do it on a household level and uh, generally what you do is to, to have to have or assess gano ba karaming food waste yung ginagamit ninyo or napoproduce ninyo as, as a family. Then you also have um, compost at work. So, ito naman yung mga businesses natin who would really want to take their journey to the next level. Ano? So, meron tayong tatlong subscription plans. We have the Soil Mate Rookie, Soil Mate Enthusiast, and Soil Mate Hero. So, pag sinabi mo Soil Mate Rookie, you have the, the subscription for three months. For Soil Mate Enthusiast, you have the subscription for six months. And for Soil Mate Hero, you have the subscription for... Uh, one year or 12 months. So I myself is a soil meat hero. I'm subscribed um, for one year and um, so far so good. I'm happy with with what I, what we are doing. We are helping the environment in this urban jungle na wala kami masyadong access for composting facilities. So this is what we are doing now as a family. Okay. So next slide, please. So ito yung compost at home. So i-determine mo muna kung ano yung composting subscription yung gagawin mo or gagamitin mo. Depende sa dami ninyo, sa family. And you can try it out first so you can be a soil mate rookie muna for three months. Then for compost at work, next. So yung compost at work naman, so depende sa number of employees ninyo, kung meron ba kayong sarili ninyong food, food canteen or meron ba talaga kayong facility na nagpo-produce ng food waste. So those are the things that you consider pagdating sa ating compost at work. Next. So ang maganda rin dito sa ating SoilMate app is that you see a lot of information. Your food waste gen being generated, um, your contribution, and also the good thing about this is we are also supporting communities. So we have beneficiaries of our compost. So yan. Um, next slide please. Punta na tayo. So yan, yan, yan yung main idea of the soil made app. But later on, we have a video that would um, give you a better uh, idea of the soil made app. Next slide, please. Okay, so ito yung um, information na magigenerate natin from the app. Okay, next. Okay, next please. 
So here are our beneficiaries. So we have Urban Green Commune. So the organization aims to have a community garden for every barangay here in Metro Manila. And of course, Good Food Community. Um, it's an organization that has been um, actively promoting community-supported agriculture. So ito yung ating mga beneficiaries. So maybe we can go now to the video for you to experience or somehow have the feel of how to use the SoilMate app. And we encourage you to download it on iOS and Android. Next slide, please. And this would be our video. So that's the SoilMate app in a nutshell. So for other for other information and other um, basically what if you have other questions for the project and other other projects of WWF, we also have our social media accounts. Maybe we can go to the next slide, please. So for our social media pages, we have on Facebook, on Twitter, we have also on Instagram, YouTube, and of course, our website, it's www.org.ph. It's on the next slide. Maybe we can flash it first. Okay. So thank you very much. And as we say in WWF, if we, if we work together, everything is possible. Together possible. Thank you very much and magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Maraming salamat, Miss Melody. I want to download this app right now. <laughs> Soilmate. And I really Do love so. it. Oh, oh, oh. I, I will engage with that app after this. No? Thank you so much for sharing the technology that uh, the WWF and the projects and the initiatives as well of the WWF that people can take inspiration from. If there's anything na hindi ko makakalimutan, yun po ay ang likas kaya, uh, Tagalog uh, word to mean sustainable. I've not heard that before. Thank you for that so much. I thank you for so much for that as well, uh, Ms. Melody. We will hear more from Ms. Melody later. I am seeing that we have already comments and questions from our participants and we will definitely be entertaining this later on after, during our um, open forum. Pero una sa lahat, tama si Rona Cabilion from LGU Tubungan. Everyone needs their soulmate or their soil meat. Opo, ako wala pa po akong soil meat. Baka naman. Thank you, Ms. Melody. And now we proceed to our third and final speaker before we head on over to our open forum and before we engage and try to answer your questions from Zoom and Facebook. Now, rounding up our set of speakers for this morning is an expert who has seven years of working experience in mobile app development for both Android and iOS. He is the founder of Meraki Software Solutions Corporation, which invented Trash Cash, an AI-based and data-driven waste segregation app where a community can participate and earn rewards in. He was a finalist to the UNDP Ending Plastic Pollution Innovation Challenge and the UN Habitat Plastic 3R Hack. He was also first runner-up at the Impact Hackathon, an attempt to the Guinness World Record, world's largest hackathon. More notably, he was a mobile application developer for ABS-CBN Big Data Analytics. Sir Benjo Rivera Vidal will now tell us about the work that he does with Trash Cash. Ladies and gentlemen, eyes and ears. Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Sir Val, for introducing me. Um, I'll share my screen.
Right. So while we're waiting for Sir Benjo to share his screen, we are reminding everybody to stay until the end of our webinar for the communication evaluation form. And if you have not yet filled out the attendance form, the link to the attendance form is just in our chat box. Okay, I think Sir Benjo is ready. Yeah, uh, can you see my screen now? Yes, yes, Paul, sir. So first of all, um, by the way, thank you no, for inviting me to speak today. And I am so delighted to be here and to be given this opportunity to speak to you about the uh, Green Apps for Sustainable Living webinar. Uh, I would like to thank also Environment uh, Management Bureau for hosting today's event. And uh, say thank you then to Ma'am Allison and Ma'am Melody of uh, WWF uh, for giving uh, pertinent information uh, regarding on uh, waste management and um, uh, regarding on the soil, soil mate. So first, uh, I, I like to introduce myself. I am Ben Joe Vidal. I am the founder of Trash Cash and I'm here to share with you an app that uh, could encourage people to participate in recycling. Uh, about us, uh, we are actually a social enterprise startup that develop a platform that will orient, educate, and incentivize uh, Filipinos to know the value and impact of their trash. So basically, we provide a community, a platform na pwede lang magamit to encourage them na mag-participate sa recycling since uh, meron kaming uh, pinapromote na uh, mga educational materials and aside from that we give incentives loan sa community and aside from that we also collect organize and sort plastic materials with the help of machine learning technology actually isa sa mga problem ngayon no lalo na sa mga nag upcycle or nagpo-produce ng mga plastic out ano mga products out of uh, plastic materials is unang-una contaminated na kagaya ng anong mga nabanggit ni uh, Ma'am Allison kanina and the flap um, hindi nila tinatanggap yung mga madudumi. Actually, yun yung isa sa mga gusto rin namin yung um, We would like to involve yung community talaga na mag-participate at, at sa household pa lang dapat sorted na yung uh, materials bago doon i-deposit sa uh, mga deposit uh, drop-off centers. So, uh, through that way, mas mapapadali natin yung uh, pag a upcycle ng mga uh, plastic. Next. So our mission is uh, we would like to create a positive social and environmental impact by increasing the recycling rates and improve waste management system by promoting proper segregation from households to prevent plastic from reaching our oceans. So isa sa mga mission talaga ng, ng trash cash is mas ma-encourage pa talaga lalo na yung mga nasa residential area kasi alam naman natin na yung residential area talaga yung pinakamarami or pinakamalaki na nagpuproduce ng plastic na eventually napupunta lang din sa landfill tapos napupunta lang din sa ating karagatan. So this is Trash Cash. Uh, Trash Cash is technically an AI-based and data-driven waste segregation app where a community can participate and earn reward. So aside from that, we, we provide government or our community partner and private firms a traceable and trackable waste management system that they can use to monitor yung real-time data and insight regarding the sa plastic na nag-generate per area para magamit naman nila for their uh, efficient waste management plans. So this is our solution, like what I mentioned. Uh, we are not only focusing on the incentive or rewards, but also for the to, to educate people kung paano yung tamang pag-recycle, yung pro proper way uh, para mas napapadali yung proseso ng uh, pag-recycle or pag-upcycle ng mga uh, plastic. So this is the Trash Cash interface. Basically, we have here the dashboard which shows the e-wallet or meron silang points every time na magde-deposit doon sa mga community partner or mga uh, partner naming barangay. So, yung mga points na naiipon nila, pwede nilang gamitin para mag-redeem ng rewards. 
So sa second screen naman, we have here the my impact data which shows the kung ilan na yung plastic na nasave mo from entering the oceans. So aside from that, um, we also have the marketplace uh, na pwedeng, kung saan pwedeng mag-redeem ng rewards sila user. Yung mga rewards na nasa marketplace namin as galing siya sa aming mga community partner at mga partner brands na nagpapamote din ng uh, sustainability. So we would like we, we really like to to uh, promote talaga yung sustainable living and aside from that uh, mas merong way yung mga tao na ma-discover na ah, may mga ganitong products pala na pwedeng alternative sa mga plastic. We also have here the machine learning which uh, automatically identify yung type ng plastic when you scan it using your phone camera. So through that machine learning, mas nabibigyan namin ng way yung mga users namin to learn na yung na may, meron pala, iba't iba pala yung klase ng mga plastic and how to properly segregate the, them, how to make it upcycle ready. So that's, that's it. And uh, aside from that, uh, once na na-scan na user yung yung mga bottles, uh, they can add it to their cart na which madi-display naman yung kung ilang points yung more earn nila uh, based doon sa plastic na i-deposit nila sa kanilang barangay. So we have here the uh, the video from GMA Brigada uh, para mas makita ninyo yung buong process yung trash cash doon sa barangay. Nung kinamaan tayo ng bagyong Fabian nitong nakaraang buwan, Nakahakot ng halos labing limang tonelada ng basura sa Baseco Beach pa lang. At ang karamihan daw ng sa mga basurang nahakot, plastic. Siyempre, ang kasunod nito, kaliwat ka ng baha. Yuck! Pero sa isang barangay sa Maynila, ang plastic basura raw pwedeng ipalit sa pagkain o gamit. single mother na si Corazon, inabutan pa nga namin kinukusot ang mga gamit na sachet ng shampoo at fabric conditioner. And then ginukupit ko nung gasan ko and then sinasampay ko. Dahil madalas din daw siyang kinakapos ang pag-iipon ng plastic na basura ang naiisip niyang paraan para makaipon. Sa kanila kasing barangay, ang bawat plastic na maiipon may katumbas na points. Kapag nakaipon na ng sapat na points, pwede na itong i-redeem. Ang gusto raw niyang i-redeem sa mga iniipon niyang points, LPG na worth 800 points. Eh kasi mahal yun eh. Awas din sa akin pang asos yun kasi solo parents ako. Hirap ng buhay ngayon. Kulang pa ang points niya para makapag-redeem ng LPG. Kaya hindi raw siya magsasawang magpakilo ng mga plastik sa kanilang drop-off center sa kanilang barangay. Kung si Corazon LPG ang pinag-iipunan, ang kasambahay na si Carolina naman, iba. Sa accident. Yung ano ba ito? Uh, accident. Oo, uh, insura. Wow! Big time! Pero teka, ano-ano ba kasi ang mga pwedeng i-redeem sa Barangay 69 gamit ang mga plastic trash points nila? Merong tinapay, delata, hotdog, face mask, pati dengue insurance at accident insurance. Yung idea ng pag-integrate ng insurance as reward, actually nanggaling talaga siya dun sa work ko. Medical social worker kasi ako sir. So I deal with patients who are financially incapacitated. Dito ko na-observe napakaraming Filipino families kung hindi talaga handa when it comes to medical needs. Very nice! Para malaman ang katumbas na points ng bawat plastic basura, ginagamitan ito ng phone app. Ito ang Trash Cash. Ang nag-develop ng phone app na ito, ang magkaibigang software engineer na sina Benjo at Bryce, kasamang iba pa nilang mga kaibigang software engineer. Kung so, meron ka mga collected plastic bottles, pwede mong i-scan yun. Then after na makakollect ka and may scan yung mga plastic bottles, punta ka sa nearest um, collection booth. 
sa barangay mo. Tapos sila rin yung magpo-proseso ng rewards mo. Gamit ang kanilang AI o Artificial Intelligence Software, kaya nitong iskan at matukoy kung anong klaseng plastic ang hawak mo. Mula sa PET o polyethylene terephthalate tulad ng mga bote ng tubig. LDPE o Low Density Polyethylene kagaya ng mga plastic bags at mga online shopping delivery bags. PP o Polypropylene o mga microwavable containers. PS o Polystyrene na katulad ng mga CD cover. Ang hindi lang daw kaya nitong maskan, mga plastic mong kaibigan. So, yeah, yeah I think uh, that's all for, for the... That's our current process in Barangay 69 in Tondo. So, aside from the app, uh, we also provide a dashboard for our community partner. Kung saan dito nila nakikita kung ilan na yung mga na-collect nila plastic, ilan yung collection nila per day. So, it's more of the data man, data naman na pwede lang magamit for their um, uh, waste management plan. So, aside from that, um, uh, aside from the barangay, uh, trash cash is not limited naman sa mga community area bas, uh, or barangay, uh, but also sa mga schools, pwede rin in condos, and actually yung mga malls. So, this is our current process. So, start with the app user, kung saan na uh, kailangan lang ma-download yung app, yung trash cash app, para makita nila kung an- ilan yung uh, points na ma-earn nila for that specific category of plastic at pwede sila makapag-add ng cart, yung sa cart nila. Then after that, they have to reinforce users to, to clean, dry, and sort the plastic materials before depositing it to our community partner. Then si community partner or si Bila Barangay, all they have to do is to provide the drop-off center and the coordination with the community as well as yung rewards na pwedeng ibigay. Since our reward system is very dynamic, it actually depends on the community partner kung ano yung pwedeng ibigay nila doon sa constituents nila. So uh, after that, uh, we also partner with Clean Our Oceans Project, which is sila naman yung nag-provide ng mga seminars on how to properly manage the waste and as well as uh, nagtatransport papunta sa EcoHub. So from EcoHub, itatransport naman nila ito sa mga upcycling company like uh, Sentinel, which uh, also produce new products uh, out of plastic materials. Then we also have yung marketplace for the rewards na pwede kung saan pwedeng mag-redeem ng rewards yung user based on sa points na na-earn niya. So here are some of the sample rewards. So uh, it's very very from the grocery items up to insurance. So like what I mentioned earlier, uh, it's very dynamic. So it really depends on the community partner kung anong rewards yung gusto lang i-provide. So aside from the community partner na, na nagpo-provide ng reward, we've also partnered with several brands na nagpo-promote naman ng uh, sustainability and also, also support yung mga environmental causes like sila Minim PH, Tirahia. So most, um, m- most likely yung mga products nila is mga uh, eco-friendly products like yung mga uh, bamboo toothbrush, packaging, and etc. So for our partner Barangay, well, uh, you can start if ever you're interested. You can start uh, without uh, zero upfront cost. So all you have to do is to um, connect with us. So then let's discuss on kung paano yung magiging process doon sa Barangay niyo. So this is uh, what we currently have in Barangay 69. So ano yung mga naiipon nila? So yeah, uh, I think that's the last part of my slide. So with Trash Cash, uh, we see the opportunity to increase recycling rates, lalo na dun sa mga community area or sa mga residential area, para mas ma-engage pa natin to an app yung mga tao na mag-participate in recycling. So yeah, that's all. Help us prevent plastic from reaching our oceans. So you can visit us on www.trashcash.ph or you can also email us at hello at trashcash.ph So, thank you. Thank you so much, TMB and to all the participants. Maraming salamat, Sir Benjo.
ang dami ko palang gawin after this webinar, no? Pupunta ako sa Plath, magda-download ako ng Soilmate, tsaka magda-download ako ng Trash Cash. <laughs> I, um, we definitely have no excuses anymore when it comes to sustainability to plastic waste solutions because it is all here. The possibilities, the solutions, they're all here. It's really up to all of us in this webinar right now and over on the Facebook live stream to do what we can to live a more sustainable lifestyle. Many organizations, institutions, and um, businesses have transitioned, have attempted transitioning to a sustainable lifestyle and sustainability as well. And we have to ride on. We have to cooperate. And we have to do our part in this endeavor. Now, before we call our panel reactors to give their expert opinions and some questions, I'd like to announce that speaking of food, we're talking about food and food waste, the most awaited hashtag pagkain local plant-based recipe contest is back. This year, the EMB wants to award original recipes that will highlight ingredients from food leftovers and fruit or vegetable scraps. Ayan, Diyos ko, baka kailangan kong sabihan yung inay ko nitong contest na to. Pagkain Lokal invites home cooks, amateurs, and professional chefs and food enthusiasts to share their original recipes that can transform food leftovers and fruit and vegetable scraps into healthy, affordable, and delicious meals. Pagkatapos ng contest na to, um, Ma'am Merv, baka naman mabigyan ako ng mga recipes. <laughs> This contest aims to promote sustainable food preparation methods to reduce solid waste from food leftovers and vegetable and fruit scraps. This contest also aims to promote healthy cooking methods that will best capture the flavor and retain the nutrients in food without adding excessive amounts of fat or salt. If you're interested, make sure to submit your plant-based recipe on or before August 30, 2021. Please visit the EMB Central Office Facebook page for the full mechanics. All right, so we are looking forward to see your the best plant-based recipes all over the Philippines. And we now will go back to our discussion and to our conversation with our invited panel reactors for this morning. We call them back to the virtual stage one by one. I'm sure madami silang nakuha at nanamnam na mga informasyon at meron din siguro silang mga insights at mga tanong para sa ating mga presenters. May we call on first from the, the OIC of the Solid Waste Management Division of DNR-EMB, Ms. Maria Delia Cristina M. Valdez. Mama, Hi, good morning. Engage with our speakers. Go ahead. Yes, good morning, Val. Thank you again. Thank you. Uh, gagaling na mga speakers natin. Ano? Very young, ang gagaling, ang daming information, ang daming bago, ang daming mga innovations. And thank you for, for, for all of that. Siguro yung aking tanong, isa lang actually yung tanong ko, eh, and this is uh, for the three of them. Pero before ko itanong, siguro ano, uh, isa-isahin ko na lang muna sila. Kay Miss Allison, Allison Audrey Villacruz Tan of Plastic Flamingo or yung The Plaques. Galing ano, uh, yung importance ng plastic waste management talagang ina-emphasize mo. Either yan ay macro plastics or microplastics talagang na-emphasize. And uh, lagi mo sinasabi yung strict implementation ng RA903 which is actually uh, within yung hierarchy of waste management, yung avoidance, yung reuse, recycling, treatment, and residuals management. And then yung na-stress mo talaga yung ano, uh, proper information and education. It all boils down sa proper information and education. Ika nga eh, uh, every plan will fail kung walang proper information and education. Uh, ang galing nung ano, output ninyo yung eco numbers. Ang ano ko lang siguro, isang additional input, um, the government will be uh, launching the National Plan of Action for the Prevention, uh, Reduction, and Management of Marine Litter. And we would like you 
look into it and maybe kasi uh, sampung strategies siya uh, anytime soon we will upload yung ating NPOA yung ating tinatawag na NPOA ML anytime soon we will upload it and um, siguro tingnan nyo na kung saan kayo pwedeng um, magbigay ng um, help sa government or makipag-partner sa government in terms of uh, plastic waste management. Yun. Thank you. Thank you, Alison. And then kay uh, Miss Melody Rake ng Soilmate mobile app, yung sa Sustainable Diner. Uh, isang likas kayang umaga sa'yo rin, Miss Melody. Um, sabi niya, no food will be wasted na, no? And all will be processed to something useful. Um, we have also, kami sa EMB, we have uh, distributed composting drums to most of our local government units uh, in the metro, in the Manila Bay area, and in some other regions then, makakareceive din sila ng composting drums to process yung kanilang uh, biodegradable waste. Uh, siguro, tingnan natin yung uh, ma-link din sa inyong project, yung mga local government units na may kakayahan na to compost or to process yung mga biodegradable waste. Baka po pwede rin silang ma-involve or makagamit ng soil made. Uh, isang magandang uh, paraan ito ng local government unit to measure their waste diversion. And siguro um, isang tayo na rin, baka pwede rin natin mailink yung ating application sa pag-measure ng ating greenhouse gas reduction. Halimbawa kung dun sa isang bucket na kuha sa isang bahay, baka pwede natin ma-measure through link to a software to measure yung greenhouse gas reduction na pwedeng makamit or pwedeng ma makuha pagka meron tayong ginamit na soil made or na i-process sa ating uh, waste sa ating composters or na i uh, donate if ever yung ibang food meron tayong mga pare-parehong ano no uh, goals uh, objective and aim and then kay Sir Benjo Rivera Vidal ng Trash Cash PH. Nakasama ko siya actually eh, sa hackathon ng UN Habitat. And I was one of the judges and pinig uh, ko na yung kanyang presentation. Um, you, you earn points, you earn or you deem, redeem the points to something uh, useful for you. Uh, and then yung kagalingan ng nasa scan, yung plastic para ma-identify kung anong type of plastic siya. And then you exchange it to uh, four points. Um, baka, baka lang naman maisip ni Sir Benjo to explore kung si ate kanina sa barangay 69 ng Manila na gamit niya sa LPG. Why not explore na maitay up din sa ating uh, uh, basic utilities like water at saka kuryente. Yung bang makaipon tayo ng basura and we earn points and yung points na pwede nating ma-redeem, pwede pala nating magamit pambayad ng kuryente o pambayad ng tubig. So, yun lang, explore lang. Why not? Tapos, sakita natin yung importance ng ano, ng digitization. Uh, kami sa EMB rin, uh, we are uh, going with the trend sa uh, development ng technology. Diyan kasi yung nasusorten na yung communication and reporting and avoiding redundancies naman din sa recordings ng mga uh, figures. Isa lang ang tanong ko sa kanilang tatlo actually. Meron tayong isang aim, isang objective, meron tayong isang goal. Kayo as entrepreneurs at kami sa government. And ang tanong ko lang siguro, saan kami pwedeng makatulong? Saan tayo pwedeng maging partner para yung ating advocacies, yung ating aim and objective ay ma-reach natin uh, without uh, being 
uh, competitors to each others to each other Ayun. ano yung pwedeng uh, maitulong ng government saan tayo pwedeng magpartner so yun muna siguro sa akin Val thank you thank you Ma'am Delia opportunities to engage and partner we start with Ali maybe to answer Ma'am Delia's question Is uh, Ali around? There you go. Yeah. Yes. Hello. Yeah. So thank you po for that comment also. I think um, with the PLAF, no, partnering with LGUs is something that we also very much want to look into, especially na hindi lang naman kami enterprise, pero we also serve as an organization that can um, touch a lot of communities and individuals. So to look into LGUs and also I will, uh, we will check on uh, to what you've mentioned po. We want to make sure na also people know about what we're doing, um, also with the plastic crisis. I think one problem na we see if, if I can mention, no, it's the banning of single-use plastics. Although I see it as something na it's very important eh, na we refuse these single-use, we also have to see that not everyone can afford non-plastic materials. Because plastic naman in general, they're very essential. Um, they're cheap, they're easy to um, to use, and then it's very lightweight, very durable. So parang that's also one thing that the PLAF wants to look into. Um, aside from refusing, there's also a lot, um, as you've mentioned nga po, there are 10 strategies, if I'm not mistaken, and we're very excited to also look into that on how we can pin and how we can help um, in these strategies and really um, become part of the movement for our country. Thank you so much, Thank Ali. You. Thank you, Ms. Alison. All right, let's proceed now to Ms. Melody. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Val. Thank you, po, ma'am. Um, uh, we are very happy na may ganun po tayong ano, no, um, initiative that um, you see this as a partnership with um, with private sectors, um, social enterprises, and with you. So for soil meat naman po, um, I believe um, one of the ways that we can engage is really to make the composting facility very near because currently we are we are supporting Metro Manila but the composting facility that we have right now is in Bulacan and Antipolo. So maybe if, if there will be possibilities that the local government unit will be able to provide uh, a composting facility, it's a minimum of 300 um, square meters, ma'am. So if there will be possibilities for, for green space to have that, um, syempre, di ba po, ang goal natin is to lessen greenhouse gas emissions. Um, as much as possible, we also have we also aim to have the green the, the composting facility very near than the area no so if there will be possibilities po in certain areas of metro manila na po pwede po natin magamit as a composting facility kasi yung collection system nandoon na po eh it's already in place so siguro yun na lang yun po yung isa ko sa isa kong naiisip another is to support yung po mga organizations that promote community gardens. And that's one of our beneficiaries, yung urban green communes. If we will be able to promote that, ma'am, in, in our respective local government units, so yung pong compost na generate po ng, ng soil meat, it can also be given to those community gardens. And you can really promote circular economy and also subsistence farming, lalo na po ngayon na, of course, we know na we have the ayudas and everything, pero iba pa rin po yung meron tayo talag na pagkukuhanan ng source of food. So I think that's one way for us to have a good partnership with the, with the government po pagdating sa soil meat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for Thank that. You, uh, for those action points talaga, no? very concrete. Uh, good mention of circular economy. That's a buzzword that uh, we try to use and to talk about as we move towards a more sustainable way of living, um, especially in terms of business institu institutions. Now, um, to represent um, the Climate Change Mainstreaming and Integration Division, DNR Climate Change Service, uh, Ms. Susan Noel, she had problems with the internet. Uh, she will be represented by Mr. J.M. Reboton for some reaction. Uh, for, 
to answer. Oh, sorry. Um, before we proceed to the session, I'm, I apologize. Before we proceed to Sir JM, Sir Benjo, uh, what is your response to the question uh, by Miss uh, Delia as to how, uh, what you need and how the government can partner with you? Uh, yeah, actually, but I mean, Actually, maraming salamat po, Ma'am Delia, no, for giving us an opportunity uh, related dun sa mga partnership natin for the government. <clears throat> Actually, isa sa mga problem namin ngayon is yung mga nakakausap namin community, sobrang interested sila. Gusto nilang ilagay yung trash, implemented trash cards sa community nila. Kaso one of the major problem is yung storage facility nila. So wala silang ma-provide na storage. Kasi, lalo na yung mga maliliit na barangay, so, hindi, hindi nila alam kung paano yung process, kung paano nila store yung mga makokollect na plastic. So, through your help, I think, mas mapapadali natin yung proseso. Na may, mas mailalatag natin yung uh, kung paano may implement yung trash cash doon sa mga community na nangangailangan ng mga support at kagaya ng uh, mga storage facility. Thank you, Sir Benjo. Uh, last na lang, Val. Uh, siguro, uh, advice ko na lang dun sa tatlo kay Ms. Uh, Melody, kay Benjo, tsaka kay Ms. Allison. If they can uh, contact us uh, through the EMB uh, official or through the Solid Waste Management uh, official email address, uh, pwedeng mag-provide sila ng uh, contact, contact details dun sa aming email para makapag- uh, usap din kami uh, sa future undertakings. Thank you, thank you, Val. Thank you so much, Ms. Delia, for those very valuable inputs. No, And this is really a good opportunity for the government to partner with the private sector, to partner with NGOs, to be able to amplify and mainstream the work and the advocacies that we have in our work. Marami salamat, Ms. Delia, for making that possible. Now let's go back to Sir J.M. Reboton for his uh, expert opinion, insights, and inquiries sa ating mga presentations representing um, Ms. Susan Noel of the DNR Climate Change Service. Sir J.M. Reboton, the floor is now yours. Hi, good morning. Hi, Sir Val. Thank you for, for that. Um, it's uh, This will not be an uh, expert opinion one. So, wala pa po tayo doon masyado. Pero, more on siguro sa side po ng climate change and dito sa mga ginagawa po natin. Uh, first po, so, um, sobrang ganda po ng mga present po ng ating mga presenters. No? Si Miss Ali, si Miss Melody, and si Sir Benjo po. So, um, siguro po, yung sa mga questions ko po kasi. Okay, start the long video. <laughs> Hi, so sir. Um, so for my questions, po kasi mostly nasagot na po siya dun sa um sa question ni ni uh, uh, from uh, solid waste management. And Delia. Uh, si Delia po. And dun sa mga follow up questions din po and sa answers ng ating presenter. Nasagot na so they have a clear delivery system po in drop off points and yung kanilang uh, points moving forward, no? clear po sa kanila. Alam po nila yung pati uh, nilang kailangan nila para sa national government and sa LGUs. Um, isa rin po is, ito pong mga initiatives natin. Um, uh, more importantly, is this is these are very essential po sa kailangan natin na behavioral change for the, especially in Metro Manila po. No? Kasi masyado po tayong uh, maraming problema dito sa Metro Manila, not only solid waste management. So behavioral change, um, those, um, that's one that um, I think this initi these initiatives will be working towards too. And that's um, really, really good po no, sa atin. You know, at least uh, nag-start na po tayo. Yung um, loss natin, uh, in place na po, yung implementation nagiging um, medyo nararamdaman na po natin pa para min sana maramdaman po natin and mas ma-implement pa po siya sufficiently and gagawin po natin yun. Tapos um, isa rin pong general comment lang dun sa um sa collection po, di ba? Nililinis po nila kasi um hindi po sila natanggap ng madumi. And siguro po dun sa paglilinis po nung sa mga from the local government units, uh, barangays, 
uh, import um, siguro maganda rin po siguro ang gagamitin po na water is yung sa um, collected po siguro natin from siguro rainwater kasi uh, may study rin po kasi sa World Bank na by 2040 kakalaw na rin po tayo ng uh, water scarcity uh, in, um, hindi lang po dahil na marami tayong uh, water ngayon is uh, dapat um, uh, use na lang po tayo ng use no? so that mas maging mindful po tayo kasi uh, malapit na po rin yun kung wala po tayong mga gagawin intervention gagawin. So mayroon naman po tayong gagawin pero for the meantime we should be more mindful no? for the use of water. At tas pag sa specific po ah, kay Miss Allison ayun okay na naman po siya. Ah, Nag-check na rin po kasi ako ng Facebook page nila sa Fluff tas yung apps po nila as soil made from WWF presented by Miss Melody sa Trash Cash by Mr. Benjo. Bali dun sa kay Miss Allison um ayun so siguro po in the future ayun sabi rin naman po nila mag-add pa po sila ng more drop of points uh plus kay Miss Melody is yung delivery system po nila uh set in place na rin naman daw po need na lang nila ng more area for composting tapos siguro po yung parang sabi ni Ma'am din mas ni Miss Melody kanina na yung composting is has moved from the commercial to the residential side is siguro dahil po rin sa pandemic no yung puro deliver na po and then more siguro nag-cook na lang sa houses yung mga tao so yun din po siguro yung reason and then si Sir Benjo yun highlight niya rin naman po yung participation ng households um so sa case po nila Sir Benjo nasa barangay na rin po yung ano Pero ayun din po, nawala raw po silang storage. So, makahelp po tayo dyan. And then, ayun po, siguro next po nila, magkakaroon po po sila ng more rewards. Tapos, ay, yun sa presentation pala ni Sir Benjo, parang dun po sa i-recycle and upcycle ng mga materials, parang hindi po nabanggit yung end product. Ayun, yun lang po. Tapos, last comment po pala. Hmm. Ah, may pabalbali pa, 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 man lang. Wala pa pabalbali eh. Sige pa, may chat. Ayan, may nagka-unmute. Ah. Yes, Sir Jay, you were saying. Yes, uh, may isa pa po ako eh. Um, ah, yun pala. So, paano po yung paano po kaya natin mas ma-engan nyo po yung ibang communities na walang access po kanyari sa internet and um, siguro dun po yung ISFs and uh, other similar communities po sa Metro Manila especially. Thank you po. Sir JM, ito po ay tanong para kay sa mga speakers natin. Apo sir, general na lang. General po, okay. So, to repeat lang, no, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you're asking paano po maingganyo ang ating mga communities na may digital divide na walang access po sa mga platforms na ito. Tama po ba, Ms. Okay. Uh, Spookyem? Okay. Sige. Ayun. So, let's hear. Thank you so much for the inputs and feedback, Sir JM. And let's now hear from our speakers, siguro, to respond to that question. Kung paano natin ma-bridge ang digital divide Paano yung walang access sa tech, sa mga digital innovations na ito? How better? How can we better reach them um, or give them access? Or baka may ginagawa kayo sa mga organizations at initiatives ninyo to parang bridge and address this digital divide and lack of access to digital technologies. Um, Sir Benjo, we can start with you. Yeah, hello. Uh, hello. Uh, currently, we have a manual and naman para doon sa mga walang app na uh, mga gusto mag-participate uh, we also have manual registration which is sila community partner yung nagre-register doon sa user um, then once registered na uh, mag-generate yun ng QR code then ipiprint nila community partner yung QR code na yun yun na yung gagamitin nila user every time na mag-deposit sila then pagpunta nila ng mga drop up center sila ano na mag assist na lang sila community partner para doon sa transaction ng Nice. So yung manual nyo, Sir Benjo, it's just a physical copy tama ba? Oo, uh -uh, may QR code. 
Mm-hmm. You are oh, okay. Oh, or yung flash crash kasi currently uh, may mga features pa kami na gusto bang i-add and ang dami pa naming gustong i-develop na mga features. Mm-hmm. So since we're currently I we really recently uh, started pa lang this year. So marami pa kaming mga needs talaga improve. And we're looking forward to those uh yeah. Sir Benjo. Miss Melody, how about you in response to Sir JM's uh, mm-hmm. question? Okay. So, um, ideally kasi talagang yung the app would really have, you really you need to have access, ano, but uh, before doing the app kasi meron din manual system ang, ang soil meet. So, we, maybe we can just ask na lang din um, our partner Green Space kung meron silang ganun na uh, idea. But generally kasi the idea for Metro Manila, we have, we have access to, to internet, we have access to technology. So, sa ngayon, ganon. But if we will be go to, going to other places, talagang valid yung question ni Sir, ni Sir JM. Ano. So, we can ask um, Green Space if there will be provisions for, for manual ulit. I'm not really sure. Kasi yun nga, eh, nag-transition kami from manual to, to app-based. So, we, we have to check on that po, Sir JM. But that's a really good point po. Especially for those places na in the Philippines na off-grid. Um, basically, walang kuryente, walang tubig. So, it's, it's really a, a, a multifaceted issue. Ito pong yeah. kawalan ng access. Ano? <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Melody. And for Ali, you're on Facebook. Not everyone has Facebook, siguro. Um, how are you going about this? Yeah, I think uh, in relation to also what Ms. Melody mentioned, I think first that the PLAF does is really to look into accessible platforms. Um, we do believe na parang not everyone has the access, but majority still um, has the data for Facebook or such. And we also initially, earlier this year, we thought of sending in fan, fan, uh, printed copies. But to have it printed again, it's another form of waste. So I think for us, the best way really is to be a voice. I think napaka-cliche na the whole thing I'm talking about is always to communicate but it is it is vital um for the plaf what we do especially for our workers um we always give them a monthly parang speech or a, a monthly uh seminar to encourage them about what's have been happening and that's also something that we can start um from our workplaces to really um hold these kinds of seminars it's one of the most traditional ways pero kung kaya natin na dati ganun ang ginagawa natin might as well ngayon, di ba? Um, yung nga lang, there's the pandemic, but still, it's not impossible. So I think that's really for the plan. Thank you, Ali. Sir JM, any last statements? Uh, yeah. Hopefully, that answered your question. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for your answers po sa presenters pa na. Tapos, uh, we would like to show our support lang din po pala na for if you have, um, need anything for from the Climate Change Service, um, open din po kami. So we will be sending our email na lang po sa chat box or e personal message na lang po namin sa mga presenters. Ayun. Maraming salamat, Sir JM. Yeah, and we, we are... Oh, yeah, um, Sir Benjo. Yes. Maraming salamat po. Uh, we're really establishing these connections no, uh, in this webinar and that's great. Uh, we have compiled and received some questions from our audience and we will be entertaining those questions and giving them to our uh, speakers after our last panel reactor. And it's now this time uh, to engage with our presenters. Uh, Vermon Timbas, Youth Advisor, please take it away. All right, thank you, Sir Bal. So, siguro, no, isa isa na lang yung question ko per presenter. So, let's start with uh, Miss Ali, the Plastic Flamingo, no? Ask ko lang muna po, sino po yung target audience natin sa uh, Project Flamingo? Thank you po. Um, for our target audience, it's really communities and individuals, um, specifically here in Philippines. Do you also target yung mga nagpapagawa, let's say, nag-build ng mga houses? Kasi right now, we're having this Build Back Better in a project, no? wherein we also promote yung pag, ano, paggagawa ng mga, let's say, mga roads natin, pag-improve ng ating mga houses. So, na isip niyo po ba na maging good audience din po ito ng project niyo? Yes, um actually right now with when it when it comes to the housing na ng, with the use of our eco numbers, ang tinitinang talaga naming partner ay ang mga LGU at mga 
um, pati na rin mga corporations who are willing to help fund this project of ours. Since, syempre, housing is not cheap and it really requires a lot of support. Um, gusto namin tingnan ng mga LGUs. At iba-iba kasi yung marami kasi kaming mission sa PLAF which involves like collecting plastics. So, iba-iba talaga yung target audience. Kaya sinasabi namin palagi na it's really everyone or anyone who's willing to help out. Not sure if discuss mo siya, no? Pero for those na nagbibigay ng plastic, meron ka ba mga incentives na binibigay sa kanila? Um, unlike trash cash, no. Actually, we do not give incentives. Um, that's something not really part of our parang storyboard sa PLAF. Uh, and we just wish to really collect plastics uh, for free. Kasi yung fruit talaga ng NY Edu is to encourage, no? Yung ating mga, ano, hindi pa aware sa environmental Um, let's say, mga stewardship and then yung mga eco-lifestyle. But at the same time, parang same yan with climate change, di ba? Ang ginagawa ng mga climate advocates is to ano, uh, influence or siguro encourage na mag-change yung mga climate, ano natin, um, climate change deniers. So siguro it's a better din na magkaroon tayo, let's say, ng mga incentives kung makita nyo yung possibility na magkagano. Kasi parang for me, ano yung incentives kaya ng mga ibang people na parang for me, oh, tapong ko na lang sa basura, unlike nahuhugasan ko pa siya. para i-donate siya, di ba? So, sometimes baka makagawa tayo ng something programs for them or kahit sobrang incentives lang. Let's say, sa isang network, kapag nagbigay sila doon, meron sila mga, sabihin ko na yan, like, let's say, globe, mga points, di ba? Gcash points, mga ganun. So, siguro, you can also uh, check if meron ganun partnership. Kasi before, may parang partnership kami with the globe na sa tree planting nila since meron silang parang G4 or something. So, siguro po, kada join ng mga participants, binibigyan natin ng mga points to sa kanilang globe points. So, ayan. Tapos, second lang, no? Since sabi mo nga po, meron ka ding mga siguro, tinitarget mo yung mga funders or let's say yung mga ano uh, construction firm. So, meron ka bang ano? Siguro next time po, no? Suggestion ko lang. Pwede ka magkaroon ng comparison between eco lumber tapos yung lumber talaga sa Philippines. So, take note mga kapatid na yung uh, DNR po is not all about protection lang. We also promote production ng mga lumbers natin. So let's say, itong eco brick na to, or eco, sorry, eco lumber po, makakapag-produce tayo, let's say, in one day, ganitong, ano siya, ganitong amount, versus yung sa lumber talaga, let's say, yung mga uh, other lumbers na ginagamit natin for construction, three years pa yung aabutin niya. So para may comparison ka lang din. At the same time, gusto ko rin sana ma-check kung ano yung difference if lightweight ba siya compared dun sa ano. sa lumber para mas makuha mo yung market ba ng mga funders mo na. Okay? Tapos, ayun, kasi, let's say yung lumber kasi, uh, nakalagay dito na, ano siya, before mo siya ikat, kailangan pa ng mga permits sa inyo, hindi na masyado siguro hassle mo. So, siguro may comparison konti sa price and at the same time, papakita natin na yung, ano nga, yung eco lumber is a better choice naman. Okay? So, ito pa, ngayong pandemic po, kumusta yung collection nyo compared dun sa pre-pandemic na? Um, talagang masasabi namin, we didn't expect that we will be able to collect a lot of plastic in comparison to pre-pandemic. Kasi nasa isip natin, ah, pag-pandemic, mas mahirap mag-collect. But after uh, after a few months, nakapag-adjust kami. We even collected more than, and ngayon, umabot na kami sa 100 tons of plastic waste collected. So, um, I think one talaga is yung online shopping kasi nakapag, in a way, yes, it has um given problem. But at the same time, because of that, yun yung um, kung paano kung uh, paano kami nakapag uh, collect ng mas madaming plastic it is a bad problem definitely but i think that's one of the reasons kung bakit itong pandemya mas dumami pa yung collected plastics thank you so much ma'am ari and congratulations so for that ano po, wonderful presentation thank and now i get i i guess now let's move on to ano to soulmate okay all right so um hi ma'am melody Hi! Hi! Hi ma'am. So di po, Bukashi Pinoy Composting po, partner din po yan ng Gulay Ninghan Project po. Mm -hmm. Ito po ay being ano, manager ng ating mga SK sa Novaliches uh, Bayan proper. Novaliches mm -hmm. proper. So ayun po, kaya medyo familiar po ako sa, ano, sa inyong um, project po. So mm -hmm. siguro yung question ko lang is all about yung mga, uh, kung ito ba na, na ating programa po ay welcome din sa mga low income earners. Kasi di ba, parang meron tayong e-cash out. Mm -hmm. no, para yes. to buy some oh, yeah. so mm -hmm. paano yung meron ba kayong parang intervention or let's say programs for low income earners na gusto rin talaga mag, mag participate sa inyong ano po inyong project mm -hmm. uh -oh. um, actually hindi yung yung soil mate it's not just for those people na gusto magpakolekta you can also start 
composting on your own, you just buy the bucket and the brand, then pwede kang mag-compose. So, wala ka doon babayaran kung hindi yung basic kit lang. So, yun yung, uh, I would say, provision namin sa mga low-income earners. And at the same time, meron din kami yung parang mag-start ka muna for three months. So, hindi ka muna yung one-time, big-time na mag magsasubscribe doon sa app. Just like what I did na one year ako talaga nag-subscribe. Maybe you can just try it out. So, yun yung dalawa naming um, options for those who, who are not capable of subscribing. Ano? So, yun siya. Um, siguro, maybe i-highlight ko na lang din, Ver- Vermon, ano, na yung sa Soilmate app din kasi nag-earn din kami ng mga incentives. So, meron kami tinatawag na compost credits wherein the subscriber, the, every bucket na you fill, you will earn compost credits. Tatlong ways mo siya pwedeng ma-redeem. One, you can have your compost for your own consumption. Kung meron kang garden, pwede kang mag-redeem ng compost mo. Second, you can donate the compost na na-earn mo sa mga partner communities natin. And third, you can also get some gulay bags coming from the the produce of our beneficiaries. So, ganun din siya. Um, wala, kaming, wala kaming binibigay na incentive bukod doon sa tatlo na yon. So, I hope na um, it will also promote a story of healing and promote a story of regeneration uh, sa mga subscribers namin sa Soilmate. Right. Ma'am, how about yung sa collection mo? Every time no, na i-pick up yun, may bayad po ba? Tama po ba? No, yung subscription na mismo na yun, incorporated na dun yung collection fees. Nandun na siya, all-in na siya. Wala ka nang poproblemahin. Uh, uh, you just get the bucket, you fill it up, then mag- magpapaschedule ka, then kukolektahin na sa'yo, bibigyan ka naman ulit ng empty bucket. So, all-in na siya, wala ka nang poproblemahin. Alright, perfect ma'am. Kasi naisip ko rin yung distance ma'am, no? Kasi the more na mas mataas, mas malayo yung distance, mas maano siya yung gas emission natin. So yeah. siguro ma'am, siguro i-promote ko na rin yung sa urban agriculture program ng mga, let's say, ng DA. So pwede po tayo makipag-partner sa, let's say, LGU and schools para sila mag-conduct ng or mag-propose sa project with DA para magkaroon ng community garden, kagaya po ng ginawa ng ating Gulay Nihan Project sa um, barangay na Palisos Park. Okay, sige. So, I'll take note of that. Po. I support your project, ma'am. And thank you thank so much, Thank you. Ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you. Siguro move on ako sa trash cash, no? Kay Sir Benjo. So, I want also to focus education part, oh. sir, no? Mm-hmm. Sir, paano nyo, ano? Just, gusto ko lang malaman, since familiar na rin ako sa project nyo po. Paano nyo uh, ini-educate yung mga, um, siguro mga target audience nyo po about sa recycling? Oh. Oh, Currently, we have we are currently working on the part na may meron kasi kami mga partner na we would like to incorporate that or to, to involve din yung mga partners na pwede sila mag-share ng mga information na pag uh, once na in-upload nila dun sa system is ma-provide doon sa app mismo or makikita ng mga tao doon sa app. And aside from that, we're currently developing din yung mga learning modules na pwede natin magamit na mas para mas maka pagbigay ng mga information on how to properly segregate their trash or waste. So, most likely ganun. Pero some of the features kasi is under development pa rin. Thank you, sir. So, so maybe, sir, ano, no? Siguro pinakaunang talagang R, tama po yung nasabi ng ating mga isang presenter kanina, is refuse po talaga. So, before you reduce, reuse, and recycle, that's the first thing you will do is refuse. Refuse sa mga things na natin kailangan. And also, maybe, i-emphasize natin yan sa ating siguro module or suggestion ko lang din po. And of course, yung buyer archy of needs, i-share ko po later on sa Zoom chat box po na siguro yung first natin talaga na option is use what we have sa bahay natin. Kasi may nakita ko ng mga, di ba parang incentives din po sir na kasi may mga discount ka dun sa mga ano, a zero waste kit, di ba? Take note, yung zero waste kit po is not collectibles. Di ba? Sa, dapat kung meron tayong isang mga reusable items, let's say yung tumbler natin, hindi na kailangan dalawang tumbler. So, kasi siguro yung one tumbler na yun is good for five years and then that's it lang. So, baka kasi yung uh, mga ibang ano natin na, okay, I have this mga reusable kits or let's say zero waste kit. The first thing talaga na pinaka-sustainable is use what you have na nasa bahay ko natin. And salamat sir for, ano, sir, for emphasizing that one, sir. And sir, dun sa ating mga ano, no, actually, uh, sa PRCMO naman, since my boss po, si Asit Joan Lagunda, is also part of the Pasig River, Coordinating and Management Office. We also ano, want to have this 
parang waste to energy project para sa mga waste natin na ano waste natin ng mga wet waste na nakakuha natin sa mga let's say coastal areas mga ganun so siguro po uh, later on kasi parang nakita ko sir ang indicator mo kasi na pag magandang education part mo sa inyong proyekto po may ging less na po sir yung mga magpapapalit sa inyo di ba yung magpapa exchange ng mga ano kasi ibig sabihin konti na lang nagpapa exchange inyo is because you educate well yung inyong mga Yeah. Um, uh, that's actually uh, our one of our goal talaga na hindi ano hindi yung may incentivize yung mga tao but ang pinaka goal talaga is malesen na yung mga plastic para siguro kapag konti na yung nagpa-participate sa trash cash isa na yun sa mga milestone namin ibig sabihin na lesen na yung na switch na yung mga tao sa paggamit ng mga alternatives totoo sir I agree sir and siguro time goes by diba na mag-reinvent or mag-fibot kayo ng project na para tuloy pa rin yung trash cast natin. Uh-huh. And sir, siguro suggestion lang po, no? So, uh, sa pagpapakipag-partner sa barangay, siguro po, the EMD, Solid Waste Management Division, can provide you yung mga barangay po na may mga maayos na MRF or yung yes. materials. Yes. Yeah, siguro sir, letter lang po kayo sir para po mag-guide din po namin kayo. Okay. Alright? So, uh, sir Benjo, maraming salamat po and congratulations po sir. Okay. Maraming salamat. Sir, bye. Thank you so much, Sir Vermon. No, napaka-engaging ng back and forth uh, with you, Sir Vermon. Maraming salamat po. And now we will have a couple of minutes to try and read questions, uh, select questions from our audience members. I saw the, sa, sa zoom, zoom chat natin, may mga nag, uh, ating mga speakers ay nagre-reply na sa mga tanong uh, sa ating Zoom chat box and that's great. Pero may mga ibang tanong din tayo na, na collect from our registration forms as well as our Facebook live stream and dito sa ating Zoom chat box. And we'll try to read it in a couple of minutes before we close off our webinar. And this this first one is for Benjo and Ali. It would be nice to hear inputs, especially um, in the work that you do. You are trying to collect trash or collect plastic, right? And there's such a thing as what we call the cobra effect. Um, I'm not sure if you've heard of that, but uh, or the perverse incentives, no? Uh, parang there's an adopted strategy or solution to the problem that will actually, you know, unintentionally make the problem worse because parang we're incent- in- incentivizing the collection of plastic or trash. The cobra effect was like, it was in, in history na parang the, the British government told people na for all the collected kasi cobras the deadly snakes were all over india and then they said if you collect and kill cobras we will give you money for it so it worked for the first part but then eventually um entrepreneurs were hoarding um and farming cobras um to get the incentives from the government and it be- created a new problem essentially So in this case, when we try to incentivize um, trash or plastic, we have one new. We have one question here: is will it not create a pro- new problem? What if people will think that they need to create trash so they can receive incentives? Uh, how do you plan to mitigate such potential impact? Uh, inputs, please, from uh, any of our speakers can can volunteer to answer that, and even Miss Melody can also chime in because I think that's a That's a good discussion question as well. Can I call Siguro first, uh, Alison? Go ahead. Yeah, I actually um, super agree with her. That's also also one reason kung bakit yung PLAF, we don't really want to have to give incentives. Then again, it is one way to encourage. And I'm not trying to say na it's um, not an encourage. Pati naman tayo, di ba, when we want to exchange something monetarily, it's a gain. But for the PLAF, I think we don't want to dwell on that um, aspect of incentivizing people. Kasi we feel nga it's an encouragement for people to Um, to just keep collecting plastic, to keep using plastics. Ayaw namin mag-build yung mindset na okay lang, mag-build ka lang ng plastics, mag-bili uh, ka ng plastics, uh, consume more plastics. Kasi at the end of the day, ma- ma-exchange naman siya eh. So that's what we don't want to sana, hindi namin i-create yun. We also want to emphasize that the PLAF or even recycling centers in general is not the best solution. We are, we're not here to serve as the only solution or kami na yung the best, the PLAF is the best. Hindi eh. Kasi 
refusing nga is again key to call attention of our policymakers or even companies who produce plastics. That's one way also to um, become part of a solution. But recycling centers is not the the optimal uh, the optimal yeah the optimal uh, optimal solution to the plastic crisis. So we believe now we're still very much flawed, um, but at the same time uh, we hope that it doesn't encourage. Now we don't encourage people to. Um, keep producing plastic waste. And uh, yeah, as you've mentioned, nga, it's a very good discussion. Um, also, I think maybe the Trash Cash PH can really enlighten us more of their perspective on that since they more uh, focus on that incentivize. Thank you. Sorry, Naka. Uh, Sir Benjo, yeah, your inputs, please. Thank you for that, Alison. Yeah, I actually agree with Ms. Alison. Yung intended kasi is not uh, the solution for for reducing plastic waste. Actually, the solution is to educate people talaga and actually to reduce plastic. While yung rewards kasi for our users, it's more of to ano lang din, uh, part of the program na kumbaga para mas mag-participate yung mga tao kasi uh, in reality talaga mas na-encourage yung mga tao na mag-participate kapag meron kapalit. Though, in regards naman doon sa mag iipon lang sila ng plastic para may reward, yung points naman na naiipon ng mga users, hindi naman ganun kalaki din kumpara sa binibili nilang mga plastic. Para, kumbaga parang, bakit, kumbaga pag gumastos ka ng mga item na mga may mga plastic packaging, kumbaga mas mahal mo siyang bibilhin kumpara doon sa mga may earn mong points. Kaya mm -hmm. kumbaga parang, Para lang kung ako as a user, para lang kumita ako ng points sa trash cash, bibili ako ng mas mahal na, kung magabibili pa ako, gagastos pa ako ng mga uh, products mm -hmm. para lang mag ng points. So, that's the idea. Kung maga hindi naman din ganun kalaki yung points na mayroon nila. Maga, mm -hmm. just part of the program na to encourage them. Instead na pinatapon lang din nila kung saan saan yung mga plastic. So, kahit pa paano, meron silang na-earn na, -earn na points na at least naiipon lang nila. Pwede naman nilang ipunin lang, hindi nilang gastos eh. Parang gano'n. Nice. So, hindi masyadong malaki ang incentives. It's there, but parang side, ano lang siya, uh, parang side way. Parang yeah, gano'n. Uh, interesting, interesting. Thank you so much, Sir Benjo. Uh, yun nga. Pwede mong gamitin to redeem rewards later. Pwede kang mag-ipon ng mag-ipon. Okay. okay, thank you so much, uh, Sir Benjo. Miss Melody, we have a question here for you. What for you will be the biggest challenge of introducing composting in highly congested communities? Um, mm -hmm. Sabi dito ng nagtanong like Tondo, for example. Mm -hmm. I think um, I we presented it a while ago during during my talk. Ano that one of the main challenges would really be the space. It's always has it, it has been the the main issue pagdating sa mga highly urbanized, um, densely populated um, areas. But more than that, it's actually um, educating also and communicating that um, composting is a uh, is a process that can be beneficial in the long run. Uh, more than the more than the space, ha? Because if wala kang space, you can have a, a like a small uh, a big container, for example, a drum. Pwede siya, eh. pwede mo siyang gamitin as your ano eh, parang uh, composting composting um, ground. Parang ganon. So, yun talaga yung issue natin talaga. Yung kaya, kaya talaga siya. It's just a matter of how we educate people in, in yeah. Tondo, for example. Pero ako na, na realize ko with this pandemic, a lot of people are into planting more, gardening more, and composting magiging ano sa kanila yon uh, magiging beneficial sa kanila or something yeah. na very interested sila. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And on that note, I know you answered this question already sa ating Zoom at chat box. Pero gusto ko lang yeah. ma-repeat ma no, for everybody. Yeah. May mga limitations ba sa food waste na hindi kwalitikado para i-compost? Okay. Or are you telling us all kinds of food waste composting? Yes. Uh -oh. Siguro uh, a little bit of education. Yun sa traditional composting kasi, normally, we, we would only accept yung mga fruits and vegetables lang. Uh -huh. yung, yung uncooked food. And yung mga bones nga, minsan hindi natin siya ina-accept yung mga protein-based na food kasi ma 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 mahirap siyang i-digest. Ano. But what what's good about uh, Bokashi composting, it's a fermentation process. It hastens the fermentation and the decomposition. And at the same time, 
it's applicable to all food items. May it be a cooked food, may it be a protein-based, may it be fruits and vegetables. So, kaya niyang i-decompose ng mas mabilis and i-ferment yung ating food waste ng mas mabilis. So, that's the good thing about Bokashi composting. So, you're using Bokashi composting. I know yes. that Bokashi balls were used to clean the Maningning Creek as well. Yes. Um, yan yung yes. system nila na ginamit, Bokashi. Yes. Napaka- Even for, ano, for yeah. Kasi Graver, I think they are they used also Bokashi balls before. Um, mm-hmm. In other parts of the Philippines, ano na rin naman siya. Very common naman din siyang ginagamit. Pero for composting, talagang ngayon siya talaga nagbuboom kasi nga mabilis, walang amoy, tapos all food, walang ano, wala kang segregation pang gagawin for for it. Thank you so much Miss Melody. Ang dami kong natutunan. Sana may, may mga natutunan. I'm sure may natututunan din ng ating mga participants. This is for Ali, um uh, for Plath. Uh do you accept eco bricks? May nagtanong. Uh, what will be the effects if some of the plastic wastes in eco bricks have residual waste? Ayun. So, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, maybe I missed this, but to repeat na lang for uh, some of our audiences. Alright. Um, actually, we do accept eco bricks. Um, the problem sometimes is when we look into the eco brick, yun nga, may dumi siya. So, what we do is we have to take them out a little. So, it parang... It's it's weird because eh? if people put an effort to put it in the brick, the bottle, and then if it's dirty, tatanggalin rin namin to, just to clean it. So we really recommend um, the people, the drop uh, the drop offs, to just really make sure that what you put inside the brick, the bottle is clean. Or if you want um, less hassle, also is to just really segregate bottles. You don't need to make them into eco bricks. Um, because for the plaf, when we see it also, na yung sa loob is an LDPE online shopping siya viable because it's just recycling namin. So it would just parang waste the time that you you've efforted to just put it in the brick. Right. So might as well keep it simple lang and just really make sure they are clean from any residue. It's like magiging added work na siya, no? Yeah. May tanong dito, one final one. Uh, how can we engage and convince families, and maybe Plath is already doing this, I'm not sure, in coastal areas specifically to maintain clean and green marine life? Maybe you can share that with us, Ali. Okay. Um, I think for now, we've been partnering with over 150 um, cities and collection points. And what we want right now is we focus on the metro. But for this year, our face is also looking into provinces since sila naman ang malapit sa ating mga oceans. So we want to also partner with that and also hopefully encourage to have a drop-off point also in their area. I think there's a, also a question earlier about a drop-off point in Visayas. As of now, we do have um, two drop-off points, one in um, Baliran, if I'm not mistaken, and also in Bacolod. So we're starting content na talaga mag-grow ang aming collection points and drop-off points. And maraming salamat, Ali. Thank you so much to our speakers. I had really fun discussing and trying to really break down some interesting discussion points that have been brought up as well uh, in our registration forms, in our Facebook live stream, and over here at the Zoom chat box. Maraming salamat, especially also to our panel of reactors for that engaging exchange as well. Ma'am Delia, Sir Jay, and, and Sir Vermon. Um, discussions are still continuing over at the Zoom chat box and we really encourage that as well. You can still continue to ask questions and connect with our speakers if you have any more questions. As we near the end of this webinar, no, we would like to share our certificates of participation Uh, certificates of uh, acknowledgement and thanks and recognition to our speakers for being here and uh, allow me to read the citation. And the Department of Environment and Natural Resources Environmental Management Bureau presents this certificate of recognition to Ms. Allison Audrey Villacruz-Tan, Ms. Melody Mello-Rake, Mr. Benjo Rivera-Vidal, for sharing their expertise in the webinar hashtag tech to protect green apps for sustainable living in support of the International Youth Day and the thrust of the Bureau. Given this 24th day of August 2021, 
signed by Ms. Karen Ann Pakpako, OIC Chief of EEIB EMB, and Engineer Visminda Osorio, Assistant Director of the Environmental Management Bureau. Can we please give our speakers uh, our digital applauses? Click the applause reaction dyan sa inyong mga Zooms uh, para makita natin, para ma ramdaman din ng ating mga uh, mga speakers ang inyong pasasalamat at uh, gratitude for sharing their time and expertise. I know they have very busy schedules but they made time on their Tuesday mornings, uh, Tuesday morning to be able to share their um, initiatives with all of you. Masasabi ko lang po ay ang dami nating um, nakuha na insights New things from this morning's webinar. Hindi uh, na po kailangan natin, hindi na po kailangan, hindi na po natin kailangan mag-lunch. Kasi punong-puno na po <laughs> ng impormasyon ng ating mga, not only ang ating mga brains, but also our hearts as well. This this new um, passion to, to really continue pursuing a more sustainable lifestyle in the wake of climate crisis and environmental degradation. Ayun! Our participants are giving their thanks, are giving our messages of appreciation sa ating chat box. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. And I hope our speakers uh, will be able to accept these words of gratitude. Now, we now have a wealth of information about green apps and social enterprises thanks to both our speakers and our reactors. Now, to formally end our webinar, may I now invite Ms. Karen Ann Pakpako, OIC of the Environmental Education and Information Division of the EMB to deliver her closing address. Ms. Karen? Thank you, Val. On behalf of the Environmental Management Bureau of the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, uh, we would like to thank all the participants and our speakers, our panel of reactors led by Ms. V uh, Del Valdez, of, uh, Chief of the Environmental Management Bureau, Solid Waste Management Division, uh, Mr. J.M. Reboton of DNR Climate Change Service, and Mr. Vermont Timbas of DNR for sharing your time and expertise in this Tech to Protect webinar. Communicating our programs through the social media platform has been challenging, but EMB is up to the challenge. That's why we keep on engaging our youth through youth leaders such as Ms. Allison Tan of the PLAF, Melody, uh, Ms. Melody Melo Wright from WWF, and Mr. Benjo Rivera Vidal from Cash Cash PH, who shared various advocacies from improper disposal of waste affecting marine life, food waste, and the value of trash. Because we want, to, we want to hear you and for you to hear us, who could better inspire and engage our youth than successful committed individuals, which we are very thankful that we're given the opportunity to gather in today's very informative webinar. Very inspiring for EMB to be surrounded with such passion and enthusiasm from our youth participants. It fuels our creativity and allows us to connect with all of you and eventually strengthen your participation to do your share for the environment. What we are sharing with you are practical and sustainable lifestyle options that immediately you can start applying to your day-to-day -day activities. Let us be reminded that caring for the environment is a shared responsibility. EMB cannot do it alone. We need your ideas, your passion, and commitment to make this planet a better place to live in. So muli, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat hanggang sa susunod nating pagsasama-sama para sa mas malinis, malusog, at ligtas na kapaligiran, isang makakalikasang araw sa ating lahat. Maraming salamat, Ms. Karen. Keyword there is shared responsibility. That is why you're here. That is why everybody is here. Our speakers are here. Our reactors are here. Because we all have a shared responsibility to protect the only planet we live on. Thank you very much, Ms. Karen, for giving us more reasons to believe that if we work together to fight environmental degradation through shifting towards more sustainable operations in the work that we do and in our everyday habits, if we work together, we will be unstoppable. We are assured to reap positive impact. So that signifies for the end of our webinar. Maraming maraming salamat sa lahat for showing up. You know, it's a Tuesday morning. You could have been doing something else, but you chose to be with us. 
and that is such a big deal. Make sure to fill out the communication evaluation form so that we may work to better our webinars in the future. The link has been chatted in the Zoom room and Facebook live stream respectively. Mga kapatid, mga fellow kabataan, consider this as the first step of your journey to be more environmentally conscious and worry about everything that's happening around you. We may have reached the end of this webinar, but this is only just the beginning of our desire to be strong advocates and on-ground volunteers for climate action, environmental sustainability, and biodiversity conservation, among others. Let's celebrate the International Youth Month together. Sama-samang pagkilos, sama-samang paghilong, ikaw, ako, tayo, ang kalikasan. Again, pagkain lokal is happening on DNR EMB. We're inviting home cooks, amateurs, and professional chefs, and food enthusiasts to share their original recipes that can transform food leftovers and food and fruit and vegetable scraps into healthy, affordable, and delicious meal. We read, uh, we acknowledge po na hindi nyo po ma-access ang communication evaluation form. Our tech team is working on it po para buksan um, ang access at i-accept ang responses ninyo. We are noting that and that's noted. Thank you so much for informing us. Uh, can you just recheck again the communication evaluation form kung pwede at bukas na po. Ayan, this is our shared mission. So we would love if you could continue to share uh, our posts from the EMB Facebook page. I will never get tired of saying this as we close. No, we only have one plan. There is no planet B. And we owe it to ourselves, our community, and to the generations that will come after us to give them the planet worth living in. Because at the end of the day, so many human lives are at stake. Tayo, mga Pilipino, and our their future is in our hands. My name is Val Vestil. Wala pa rin pong jowa, wala pang soulmate, baka naman. Thank you once again for being here in the hashtag Tech to Protect webinar organized by DNR EMV. Stay safe, follow safety protocol, get vaccinated, drink water, tell them you love them before it's too late. God bless everyone. See you around. Ingat. Bye.